Hey everybody, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking a revisited look at one of my old Academy tutorials. This was once part of the six week masterclass which was designed to give you six individual looks that you could amalgamate and make your very own style of painting. But I have to say that this tutorial is probably a very standalone tutorial. It's one of my favourite faux patterners, which the actual tutorial was this project here, the modern industrial rust look. Um, I'm going to take you through this step by step to create this faux patterner using chalk paint. The beauty of creating um, this patterner using chalk paint, it's all safe to bring into your house. It's not a chemical finish. You can use it, I've used it on my dining table with a, a planter, a wooden planter that I've made. I've used it on faux Christmas ornaments. So you could use this anywhere in your home. I would also say we're not creating the drawers today. That'll be for another tutorial. It is a long one, guys. I've tried to edit it down a little bit shorter. It's about 50 minutes, so grab a cup of tea and a slice of cake and maybe even a full meal, whatever it takes to get you to the other side of this tutorial. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, so let's get stuck into the tutorial. And first up, if you are using this technique, over a piece of furniture, the best piece of advice I could give at this stage is try and look out for a piece of furniture that is quite boxy and square. Remember, this is an illusion of a piece of metal that has gone rusty over time. Think of the shapes of metal furniture. They tend to be quite utilitarian and square. Obviously, this piece of furniture does have a few curves, but I think it still works for a workshop piece. I think it must have originated from a restaurant. I think the cubby holes were for cutlery. So I think it will work really well for my paintbrushes as well. The base of this piece um, had some damage. Um, I've decided I decided to quickly knock up a new base and I've just framed it basically out of a, a cheap piece of pine. Um, I'm not going to worry about the colour of that because it's going to have a lot of paint on it anyway. So that's why you're seeing at the bottom um, a real different colour in timber. I've removed the back of this piece just because there's a lot of different cubby holes that we need to get the paint into. So we can paint from back and front. Um, it's always used, a lot of bureaus um, have this sort of thing where you can take the back off, unscrew them and bring the inside out and paint it much easier. So that's why the back, you can see through the project. The first thing that I'm going to do is remove the door because we're going to add lots of embellishment to this door and you'll see why later on in the project. So. Handy tool, take the screws out of the hinges. Within this project, there's an awful lot of prep, but it's the prep work that's gonna really help this piece of wood look like metal. I found these at the local hardware shop. They are vent. It was relative cheap, three English pounds. And all I want to use this for is to apply to the front of my wooden door front. And we're going to paint over these. And there's also other little um, things that I might add. We're going to add a, a handle. Um, these are cup handles. Lots of people use them for furniture. There's different ones. I've got metal ones and I've got a small aluminium one. I'm not too sure which one we'll use and where we'll apply them. Um, I do think that I'll probably go for the cheapest one because it looks more moulded and I want it to look part of this piece of well, wood which will end up looking like metal. As furniture upcyclers we all know our way around pieces of furniture and these things are things that I pull off the bottom of chairs. Um, I, I don't know what they're called. Um, and these ones are from inside drawers. So these, basically, they sit on 
the, the little cap that sits over the screw inside a drawer, and these are from the base of a chair leg. They're little pins that you hammer into the wood, but they're perfect for this rust effect. We're gonna pin them in to the wood, and these are gonna give us a metal rivet. So this is a, a, an interesting little hack to, to make our wood look more like metal. To make this a lot easier on ourselves, we're gonna use double-sided sticky tape to apply this to the place where we want it. And we're still gonna put the screws in, but what that, this will do, it'll help make sure there's no lift off on the edges of the uh, metal vent. Um, so it gets to the edge of your vent. I don't like double-sided sticky tape. It gets everywhere. It's not easy to cut with a pair of scissors. It doesn't have to be too neat. There's gonna be an awful lot of paint over the top of these. And don't worry that you'll be able to see into that because I've got another technique to hide all of these things. So make sure it's the right way up. The hinges are that side, yep. Good to go. La line it up with the edges of the detail. Happy with that. And push down and it makes sure it's nice and firm. And once you're happy, we can, I've got some little screws and we're gonna screw them in. Cause you want the screw heads cause this is all about making it look as if it is a piece of metal that this always intended to be here. So that is how it should look, firmly in place. What I would say to you is if you've had to cut the edges of this vent, just take a little bit of sandpaper and just sandpaper the edges, you've got no sharp edges and that's good to go with the paint. Right, back to the furniture feet and furniture screw covers. covers. We're gonna use the screw covers. They've got a nice little, nice little detail in the center and we're gonna add these to the door front. Now, what I would say is play around with where you want to apply these. Think about um, where a rivet would be in the metal. It may be that you would do a line on a, a connection, on a join, maybe down there. I find it looks much better on the, on the front of the door, just evenly sp uh, spread around. So I'm gonna use six, just in that middle panel. Um, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna guesstimate where I'm gonna put them because it's organic, it wouldn't be uh, neat. So we're gonna uh, apply them to there. I think that's what makes me happy. Yeah. So all that, all that requires is a hammer. So these little things have got little pincers so we can just literally start hammering away. I'm gonna move these off so they don't jump. And that'll be where the first one goes. And the reason we ultimately are putting these into the timber is it's going to give us places to add the rust to. These are all little uh, failures in, in the metal which where over time rust, it, it gathers water so the failures of where these are are going to get more rusty and more cruddy and so we're going to be able to add the colours that we want around those areas. So that's my last one in. I'm happy with where I've placed them. I'm not gonna overdo it. I'm just gonna add these six to allow it to breathe. Um, going back to the handles, um, I've really have decided the cheapest handle I've got, it's the most molded and I think it really will work. And it, the thing is about the handle, the door opens from this side. You can see where I filled. I can't put the handle there. I just don't like that look. I want it to be centralized. These cup handles always look better central. So there should be enough to be able to get leverage on the door from the center anyway. So that's where that's gonna live. We're gonna screw that into place and then we're almost good to go. So that's my handle on. I'm really happy with the overall look. 
Uh, now we have to do something very interesting. Now I don't normally use spray paint and it, they're not my favourite for the VOCs and I don't like to breathe in those nasty fumes but we're going to have to apply some spray paint and the reason being I do not want this metallic to show through and I sometimes do this an awful lot with hardware that I'm painting over. If I've got a chrome finish and I want to make it vanish I'll just give it a light misting of um, a, a spray paint over the top, a brown or a black. So we're going to take this outside the workshop to do this. So, whilst we're waiting for the spray paint to dry outside the workshop, um, we're going to start the first coat onto the base part of this. And the colour that I've chosen to use is um, Duck Egg. Um, it could be any colour. I, I want to get the look of um, paint that's maybe chipped away over years. So I'm going to try and keep the top quite Duck Eggy and then the lower part's more rusty, so where the weather would catch it along, um, along the base of the unit. All we're going to do is, I'm not even going to clean the piece. Um, normally I would always say, Soap Spirit, clean your piece first. Um, but in this case, I'm going to leave all of the dirt and the gruff because we're going to add lots of texture to it. So um, I'm going with... Uh, an old can that I've had open, it's quite thick, so I don't mind the textures. And I'm using my uh, middle size oval Annie brush. Um, later on in the process, we may use a large chip brush to get the texture into the paint, but I will explain what I'm doing as we get there. So for now, we're just literally getting a coat of paint inside and along anywhere we want it to be and it, you can be as messy as you like with this for this job it is messy the inside of the piece i'm going to just leave as duck egg it, it, it does basically freshen up the inside but the outside is obviously where the rusty decayed look is going to be the back section i will also paint duck egg and i think i'll just leave the back duck egg you may see a little bit of the back but I'm kind of thinking the weather would never reach the back of this, so the rain wouldn't reach that back part, so I'll allow that to be duck egg. It'll be a good contrast. I'm not going to be neat about it because it's the little failures in the brush strokes that's going to really make the rust effect look quite cool. Just really want to get a good coat of this on very quickly. These things are never fun to get into, but if I go around the back, hello, you can see, I can easily get my brush lengthways. Ooh, big spider, big spider, hello. Hello, Mr. Spider. Where did he go? Save the spider. <laughs> I now have a spider with blue legs. Duck egg blue legs is bang on trend. And you may see that I'm just missing little bits and bobs out. I'm not really worrying about this because ultimately there's going to be a graphite coat over the top. So little bits of this dark wood. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I do want to get some good coverage in certain areas, but not everywhere. The use of my medium Annie brush really cuts the time down in getting this first coat on. The bristle count so high in this brush, it really helps. As you can see, I've nearly finished the first coat and I haven't taken too much care with this first coat. There is a few areas that I'm gonna go back and touch up like at the back of the cubby holes um, because I'm not going to allow the rusty bits to go down to the back, only the front surfaces. But I'm pretty much happy with this first coat. 
this is the um, spray painted door. It's now fully dry. We're going to marry it back to the piece of furniture um, with the screws. And there we have it. You can almost see where we're going with this look now. Um, this is going to be painted out, but it's all, almost got that industrial look, which I'm quite happy about. So let's carry on with the duck egg over this, and then we can get to the interesting, exciting part with the graphite and the rusty tones to come after that. Whilst we're waiting for the duck egg to dry, I'm going to try and tackle this top piece of wood. I did want to keep some wood in this project. Now, what will happen, will happen, I don't know what's going to happen. I suspect the, it won't, the paint will not soak into the grain. It's quite tight grained and I haven't sanded it very well. So there's still bits of varnish, but I'm going to leave that because I think what will happen, it'll add lots of texture and, and quite, I want it to look worn. And I think by not taking everything off, it will do. So we're going to add a wash of graphite. Now a very, um, I, basically, I'm not going to mix too much water to this wash. I'm just going to apply a little bit of paint to a bowl. And I'm going to go with a water spray just to loosen it a little bit um, and mix it round. So I've got a couple of cloths handy, so we can take it off. If, if I'm not happy with it, I'll take it off. Um, we'll just see how this soaks into the, the, the timber. The stronger the paint is, the more coverage you're going to get. Now, if this was very porous and most of the varnish off, basically it would soak into the, the timber. You'll see around the edges, it will do that. I need to add some more water to the bowl. Add a little bit of water to, to, to that as well. I'm not gonna worry about my duck egg bits at this point because we're gonna be putting graphite over them in a little while. Basically, I just want to add some more tone to this piece of wood. It's a stain into the wood, but I want it to look like antique timber. That's had a life. What I'm trying to do as well, any of the little knocks and chips is push the paint into them and any of the porous areas and I'm going to take a slightly dampened cloth and we're just going to uh, stroke over the top just to reveal some of the original sort of tone to come through, some of those orangey tones. It's just to add a rustic-y twist to the timber. So it, it is staining. I'm quite happy with it, but I want some of the grain to come back. The edges are quite nice. And you can see where some of the dark stain is still there. They're quite nice. They're quite chippy. That. And then after this, we're going to also add a layer of dark wax, so it's going to add another layer of texture and depth to this piece of wood. I quite like the fact that it's darker at the ends, so I'm going to allow it to be a bit lighter through the middle and a bit darker at the ends. And it's picking up all of the, the um, marks where it's been scratched over the time and I really like that. This is great pattern for old timber. So that's a great look for me. So I'm going to leave it at that. We'll allow this to dry and then we will add maybe a touch of clear wax and lots of dark wax to add another layer of beautifulness to this piece of timber. And then we're going to have to cover this up while we work on the bottom half. Whilst the cameras weren't rolling, I decided to put a top coat of clear wax to protect my graphite wash on my timber and I'm super pleased with the outcome. We may add some dark wax at the end of this tutorial, but for now we're going to work on this rusty technique um, and we're going to work on the bottom half of this cabinet. And this is the bit where you're going to think, it looks nice, stop, you've gone mad. But it has to be done and it's a, a case of trusting in your confidence and building these layers up. So you really have to go with it and we're going to start with a coat of graphite. So I'm using a little roller tray and the reason I'm putting it in a tray and not from the can is that I want the air to get to this paint. I want it to go thick and cruddy and as we work with it, it will 
add texture to the to the overall piece. So literally pour pour out your paint into your roller tray and with this I'm going to use two brushes and the little nodules on the on the roller tray will help uh, allow me to take off excess paint so that's why I wanted to use this tray and I'm also going to use a thicker chip brush the reason I'm using cheap chip brushes for this part of the project is I'm doing a lot of stippling I don't want to damage my oval Annie Sloan brush um, it's much better to use something cheaper and you'll find little hairs might snap off and it'll add all texture and it'll look great, it'll look gorgeous into the paint. I'm going to come down and work from the bottom and literally I'm not going to worry about it. It's a bit dry brushy, it's a bit texturizy. We can stipple it on. The idea is to get texture into the paint and it doesn't matter if ultimately we leave the odd little bit of duck egg poking through but we do need to get quite a lot on and quite quick because otherwise it becomes tedious so we just want to get as much on as we can and yes you think oh no what is he doing but it will all make sense and as you can see in certain areas I'm getting the brush and I'm stabbing it and adding texture with the paint if you look at rust rust has got lots of um, texture in it it's, and full of different colours and um, we, when we come to the other layers of colour that's what we want the paint to sit into into those layers so I'm adding those crunchy textured looks with the brush also I have thought about this long and hard I don't know whether I'm gonna go right into the back of these pieces I'm just gonna work stand back take a look at my work and and work out where I really want to. I really do want to put the dark and the rust into the front of these because I, I would like to put trickles of um, uh, Barcelona orange or Arles to sit in these indentations. So I do need to have some of my dark, dark paint in there, but I don't know if I'll do it all the way to the back. There's no exact way of applying this paint. You can see I'm doing up, down, round, stab, stab, stab. You don't really have to think about how you get this paint on. You just need to get some paint on. So I've been using the hairdryer to, to semi-dry this really. It doesn't want to be completely dry. It's a, an interesting thing to do, but I'm going to take some sandpaper and just basically rub some areas off back to the duck egg. It's a good way of distressing when it's not quite fully dry. So you'll pick up rough sort of patches along the edges. It will just pick up where it wants to pick up. So this is adding sort of those duck egg patches. There's a good bit here where it's quite wet. So, And if there's anything that you're not too sure about, you can go back with your paint and kind of block it back out. But it's a good way of allowing this to be a bit more organic and let some of that duck egg from the original tone to come through. So it's just adding a scruff rubbed out look on the edges so there's some nice stuff going on up here I'm quite happy with that and of course again when you wax this it'll really come to life So now you'll, you'll be able to see why I used the duck egg first. Already you can see it's almost got like a metallic feel to it. So you could go this far and stop. If you don't want a rusty look, you could go for this sort of um, quite heavy steel look. Um, just by bringing back the duck egg on the edges, it kind of gives that sort of tone. But this is going to have a lot more paint. We're going to apply on fleur in random patches next. And then we're also, we'll add Barcelona orange and owls to add to that rusty look. There really is no rhyme or reason to this. You're just basically taking some of the paint off in certain areas 
this way of distressing, there's no right or wrong to it. You basically allowing it to be a bit organic. And in there, I've got a few scratchy bits, not very keen, it was quite damp, so I'm gonna pick up the brush, just blot them back out and come back to that later. But otherwise, I'm quite happy with how the whole piece is coming together. I'm super happy with the outcome of the sandpaper bringing back these lovely chippy bits of paint of the duck egg shining through. Um, so I'm really happy with that. And if you want to stick with that look, you can do, but this is all about the rust. So this is my recipe for rust. Um, on Fleur, Barcelona Orange, we have Primer Red and Arles. These, if you look at rust, all of these tones should be within a rusty piece of metal. And you, they will come in different amounts. So you might see more on fleur or more Barcelona orange. Usually, if you take a really close look, you'll see sort of an Arles Barcelona orange trickle where the, where the weather has caught the, 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 the decay and it's dripped down. So that's where you'll find those really bright oranges usually. Um, so let's start putting these tones to the piece of furniture. I'm gonna start with primer red because I want this tone to be deep within the rust. And this has been in the workshop for some time. It's not a color that gets used very often and it's gone, as you can see, it's gone lovely and thick. So I'm putting it onto an old plate and we're gonna go back with the original brush that I was using earlier for the graphite. I've only just wiped some of the graphite off. And we're gonna, the same again, we're loading up the brush in a stipple motion. You can see this is what we wanna end up with when we apply it. And it's, again, it's, it's all to do with choice of where you apply this. So we're gonna use this as a, a guide to mark out where we're gonna put this rust. So we're gonna start lower down and we're gonna start here. I want to allow the duck egg, I don't want to go over the duck egg, I want to allow that to come out in certain areas. So I'm kind of rivering it up through, through the areas and trying to miss some of the duck egg. So plenty down at the bottom, here and here, but still leaving the edge of the duck egg. There's a nice area here this, I'm not going to put too much of this tone into the whole piece because I want it to vanish deep beneath the enfleur. Because enfleur, you could just go with enfleur and it looks like rust alone without the other tones. I'm good with my primer red. And yes, it does look like something that Dracula would love, but we're gonna soon change that. And so what I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of enfleur with graphite. So I've got a darker brown, uh, a richer brown, and a little bit of enfleur to the other side. So I've got two tones and I've put them all in the same plate and I'm still gonna use the same brush. The more that you use your chip brush and stab it, the more fluffy it's gonna get, the better the look will be. So we're gonna start at the bottom again and we're gonna pick up some of the enfleur and we're gonna just go over the areas that we've already been, picking up both tones. And it's a little bit, I'm gonna put that down. It's a little bit again, stabby. Just go over some of your primer red. Let only little pieces of this show through. And this is building up the brownie tones of the rust. And I didn't wait for these to dry. I'm just literally going back over to build these tones up. And this is the hardest part of the whole thing. At this point, you really do feel, oh gosh, what am I doing? It looks so wonderful, it's duck egg blue. And it, it, it really, there's a moment in this where it will change and all of a sudden you'll sit, go from seeing a mess to seeing rust. And at the moment, I can't see it, but the more that we build, the better it will get. So what I'm doing is I'm only picking up on the edges of the shelves because I'm thinking about uh, water ingress. If it was to come over this piece, it perhaps wouldn't go as far back. So I'm only gonna catch the edges and then we're gonna use the Barcelona orange and the Arles later on to trickle into these connections of all the joints, which is the best bit at the end. 
So I'm going to keep on building the tone here so you can almost see how this is going to come to life as rust. So I'm building up to the top. So there's going to be more of the, the en fleur breaking through from the bottom to the top. And only little glimmers of the primer red, not too much of the primer red, because it's quite a strong colour. And we need to push that into the background of these tones. Just picked up some primer red there, but that's fine. We can go over. And keep on rotating your brush from side to side because what will happen, you won't end up with a, an oblong splatter that way. You'll end up with random splatters and that's what we need to create this look. We don't need, it needs to be organic. Right, after a long time of stippling to get this second layer of stippling on, because I've used quite a lot of um, en fleur, I'm quite happy with this look. So I've taken a, quite a lot of the duck egg away, and I don't know whether this will work, but I've, I've got my sandpaper, so we might just still keep on coming back to reveal little bits of the duck egg as we go along because the paint's still got moisture in it, so it should just knock it back. Can you see? So you can still keep on working this, allowing it to come back, because we don't want to lose all of that loveliness in certain areas, like on these edges. So you can keep on working with your quite coarse grit sandpaper to bring some of that back whilst it's still got moisture in it. But for now, we're going to work with these two beautiful tones. They're very underused, and one of, these two are my favourites. So I've put, as you see, I've put the two on one plate, and we're going to pick up half and half on the brush. So I'm going through the middle, and I'm tapping them off. Notice as well, the en fleur is still in the brush. So it's almost like I'm just using one brush. I'm not washing in between. I'm just picking up the colours to build up the tones. So. Here we go. There's still moisture in the en fleur, so I'm going to go at a light touch and just add a little bit in, um, building the tone up. So you can see it's quite spotty. We may need to get the hair dry and dry this layer and then go back again and again. But it's basically build up and pick up a bit of each colour. There's going to be rust, more rust along the bottom of this piece because the water ingress probably would have sat along this edge. So I want to make sure that there's real orangey stuff at the bottom, real deep orange. So I'm picking up more Barcelona orange right the way along this edge. And then a bit of Arles above. And you can always go back and pick up a little bit of the en fleur to knock it back out if you think it's not quite right. But really, we're just building these tones. Keep on going, believing it, believing that you're going to do a good job because that's what it's going to take, a lot of belief, because it just looks a muddy mess. But in the end, it will come out beautifully, just like rust, I promise you. So the colours were merging together a little bit. So I've been drying and I've got a, a second brush on the go, a smaller chip brush to pick up the, uh, the orangey tones. And I'm going to keep the en fleur just to take out what I don't like. So I'm picking up Arles and again, so I'm going across, but I am also doing sort of like little dry brushy movements as well. So not picking up a lot of paint because we put the stipples in the original coat of uh, graphite and en fleur, you can pick up, so you can kind of dry brush, and if you don't like something, pick up, again, pick up your uh, en fleur and kind of blot it back out almost. So here we go, I'm gonna put lots of, a bit more Barcelona orange into the, these corners, into these crevices and up the sides. And it's, again, it just kind of, stippling motion. I, I'm going to put plenty here because it would all gather here. On this corner it would gather a bit more owls 
and it would trickle down that point. So, and then taking the, the en fleur just to soften, if you get any big patches that you're not sure about, soften them back out. So it's a case of dry brushing, wet brushing, stippling, a mixture of things going on to create this, but it's quite, it's quite interesting how the, the thing builds. It builds and it gets really exciting and you kind of think, oh yes, I can see it, I can see it. It's a slow burn, but eventually you'll start seeing rust. The colours will work for you. So it's a lots of things, stippling, stippling out. Um, it's n there's no random, it's, it's, it's really good for somebody that's not very good at painting because you're, you, you can let your mind go. Right, picked up too much, brushed it in. This is a good point to show you. Oh dear, what have I done? Pick up the other tones, back out. It almost becomes, that was a happy accident, that's become kind of quite nice. So never fear, this is why I'm telling you, just go for it, don't worry. If you kind of do something, you think, ooh, that's terrible. It's not terrible, because you can fix easy. Look, now I'm adding some more orangey tone. Barcelona orange, lovely. So that's where it's built up and it's blistered. It's really blistered the rust, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna build it up the sides. Again, this corner, lots of Barcelona orange will pull in that corner and down that leg. So that's where we're gonna go. So we're gonna keep on building the tones, maybe just a little bit of, look, look at that, dry brushing across there. So you're gonna have so much fun when you do this. After another 20 minutes of stippling with the three colours, en fleur, Barcelona orange and Arles, this is what we've come to. And I am super happy. I can see it almost looks like it come off the Titanic now. But there's a few more key techniques to really make this look like rust. And these are my favourite bit parts of, of the process. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mix up a little bit of the two colours. So, a little bit of Barcelona orange into a into a dish. We don't need much of this. A little bit of Arles to the other side. I'm allowing it to trickle over the edge of the, the bowl there because I can pick up some solid colour because these two in the middle, we're gonna, we're gonna water down just a fraction. I'm doing it with a, a plant spray so I can see how much that I've watered it down. I'm quite happy. It's really a consistency, a real runny, it needs to be like single cream, really. So you, you can probably hear it sloshing about there. Yeah, so it's making a, a, a bright orange. This is the, the real rusty stuff that trickles down the edge of an old piece of metal. I'm happy with that. So I'll leave my brush at the bottom here. I'm gonna pick up a smaller brush. And what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna, we're gonna apply these to certain connections. So I'm gonna apply in this connection, this connection, all of these connections where it would kind of gather. So we're gonna allow, like, allow it to head south. So it's gonna get messy. You, you wanna cover your floors because we're gonna tip this up and spritz it and allow it to trickle. So all I'm gonna do is this runny solution here, I'm just gonna go in and from the back, I'm gonna push it into that crevice. I'm gonna put more at the back here, allow it to just trickle into that gap. And I'll pop that down for a moment and pick up your spray again. So you might want to tilt, tilt your piece up and don't worry about the rest of your piece where you've painted it, it'll be fine. Look, can you see how it's trickling out? So you might need to soften it a little bit with a cloth, play around with the paint a little bit with the cloth so you can add a, a little bit of stippling motion just to break that harsh line up. But that is all I'm gonna do, is allow it to trickle and blend. We'll do a, we'll do a section on the front so this is, this is where it's gonna happen much easier because obviously it's heading down anyway. So we'll take right up in this corner, 
we're going to go up here, apply the paint, quite heavy in this corner and you'll be able to see this happening. And then we're going to pick up the, the moisture. And you see how it trickles and pulls? These are all the things we want it to do. Just going to soften that edge. These would gather, you know, you could paint a little bit round over the top. This is where the magic happens. So we allow the moisture to run down. You don't need, you need plenty of paint because if you allow it to rinse away too much, once waxed, it will be invisible. So I'm quite happy with that amount. We'll go to the other side. We'll apply here underneath things, maybe along there a little bit and spritz. And we'll come down a little bit and we're going to do over this vent. Now this vent is, there's loads of places. This is why we put the vent on. So there's lots of places for this to pull and sit. And the little dribbles on the edge of the bowl, I'm going to pick more Barcelona orange up on that bit. So that's a bit more solid colour. We're going to just tap it into certain areas like that. It's going to create a really random splodge. And I'm happy with that one. Can you see as well, it's hitting this, this bit along the bottom, so we'll add more in, up that side. So this, it's just gonna gather along this edge at the bottom. This is the fun part. Hinges, we've got hinges, straight down the hinge. Of course, it's metal. It's gonna catch the weather, and we're gonna catch Lots of lovely, trickly stuff. Don't worry about your other paintwork. It will, it will be fine where it is. So if you've got any harsh lines, just take them off and play around with it a little bit. I'm gonna keep on going on all of the connections. We're gonna go internal in these cubby holes as well and just build the paint. This will be a nice place though. Oh, can't resist. Let's go for it. Let's do a bit more. Right, heavy. We're going to do really heavy here. You see that magic? Blot it away. So this bit is really lovely to do. Straight across the handle, a little bit underneath. The handle will gather the weather. So allow it to pull, trickle down. You know, I don't like these harsh lines, so we're just going to stipple it in with a bit of old rag. This is what I was using earlier with the graphite, so I'm only happy when I'm getting messy. And we're going to go down this horizontal line now. We're going to build the paint up at the top on the corner and straight down in a line. Spritz. Allow the water to do its thing. So here we are at the end of the day. It's still drying, but I am so happy with the outcome. There's just a couple of last flourishes to do. So I'm going to add a figure on the front of this cabinet door. I'm going to add a number five in this. This is why I've left this blank area where I haven't done too much distressing or too much of the, the Barcelona orange or anything. So I'm going to add um, a little stencil. Number five I've chosen. Hang on, I've got sticky fingers. I don't want to put this over the top. Right, so the number five is going to sit here. I'm going to use old ochre. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little Annie roller, but I'm not going to use the roller. I'm just going to dab it in. Um, I don't want it to be perfect. So all, all, if you can see, I'm just loading up the roller here, the end of the roller, and tapping it dry on there. This is very quick. It's offloading, tapping on, offloading, tapping on. And that should be enough. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to line it up where I want it directly central. You could measure this, but I am one to guesstimate everything. It looks a little bit more natural. And we're just going to tap it in. And I don't want it to be solid. I just want it to be a little bit random. So it fades away at the bottom, maybe. 
and reveal. There we go. I'm happy with that. And now we're going to roll on to another little hidden technique. I use cinnamon to look like rust. So we're going to apply to certain areas like on the knuckles of this handle, maybe on, on anywhere that I might have pulled off too much paint, I'm going to add some cruddiness with some cinnamon and some decoupage medium. Now normally, you, I would do this tilted up on end, but I'm going to um, and sprinkle the cinnamon into the glue, but I'm going to mix it in a bowl and, and dab it on with the brush. So you could do either or. So again, just don't dip your brush with cinnamon on into your decoupage medium. You will ruin the whole jar. So I'm tipping out a little bit into here. That should be enough for me. Put the lid on, put out of the way of the cinnamon. And I've just got ground cinnamon. So I'm sprinkling my cinnamon into the bowl so I can play around with the two in the bowl. But you could put your glue on, sprinkle over the top. But this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to mix in the bowl. Got a little artist brush and we're going to mix it up and make a, a powdery dust. Smells absolutely beautiful. And we're going to pick up the glue and I'm going to go in here and just tap this into little areas. The glue will go transparent, but the cinnamon will add a little bit of crunch and texture. It's a lovely colour once dried. And of course, you can just, over the top, you can wax the whole piece and it will just blend away. So it's literally adding little bits of texture and crud into certain areas. So you could do it along, maybe in, in the corners of these areas and just add a bit of texture along the top of here, pick up the glue and then pick up the cinnamon. So I'm not going to cover the whole piece, I'm just going to pick a few key areas. To be honest, I'm really happy with the way it looks but I wanted you to know this technique. You can use it on smaller projects, maybe uh, an old, uh, a candle sconce or um, a light fitment, maybe anything that you, you know might work, sort of that metal sort of rusty patina. So I'm generally just picking up a little bit of glue and then tapping in the cinnamon, which smells absolutely gorgeous. And if it's near Christmas time, your whole house will smell beautiful. But you can see how it's balling up, making little balls of things. You will need an old brush because this brush will eventually get all crudded up, but I quite like that. Rust actually flakes away. So this is going to give you this flaky stuff, which looks really awesome. If you want to bring this into your home, once waxed, it's going to be totally safe to be around your soft furnishing. So when would you ever bring anything into the home that was rusty in fear of damaging those things? So now we can have that industrial look in the home that also smells beautiful. We're there, finally to the end. All that's left to do is wax and attach the back to the piece. But I'm leaving the back off because I want to be able to, as before, get into these back pieces. So let's get some wax on it and see the colors come to life. So you can go straight over your cinnamon. It's not a problem. It'll just blend beautifully into the rest of the the piece and this is where the magic happens. All of those layers of colours, several layers of tone that we've added on, the duck eggs coming back, lots of the Barcelona, Barcelona oranges is coming to the forefront. The, the warm tones you'll see and this will just, and just look perfectly like rust. You don't want to over buff this, we don't want to be polishing it, you know, we just literally take, taking the excess off. It wants to be quite matte. So pop that there. So in, an, in all of the indentations of here, but just add your wax to finish. So most of you will probably not enjoy waxing, but I really do when it's a piece that's so intricate with so many layers of tone. So when you add your wax, you can really see those tones coming through and it's such a joy. Um, I've got to talk about the top. I did mention this earlier on. 
I was going to add some dark wax into the grey. I'm going to leave it because I fear that if I darken it up, it will be too dark against here. So I'm quite happy with this connection, this sort of old oaky ground wood. So I'll just add another coat of clear wax to the top and this should be the project on it. So here we have it. It's a wrap.